Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we are going to focus on the next relational algebra operation, the Cartesian product. And we know basically there are six fundamental relational algebra operations, the select operation, the project operation, union, say difference, Cartesian product and rename operation. And we have already seen about select, project, union and set difference and in this presentation we are going to focus on the Cartesian product. What is this Cartesian product? As the name itself says that it's going to do the product operation between two relations. So Cartesian product associates every tuple of relation 1 with every tuple of relation 2. It's going to associate every tuple of relation 1 with every tuple of relation 2. Say for example, if relation 1 contains 5 tuples and relation 2 contains 7 tuples, so the Cartesian product between these two relations will give 35 tuples. That is R1 multiplied by R2 or simply R1 Cartesian product R2. Don't worry about the details of this Cartesian product now. Once we see an example, you will be able to understand things clearly. For now, just understand that every tuple of R1 is going to be associated with every tuple of relation 2 or simply R2. And with this explanation, you would have guessed that this is also a binary operation because this Cartesian product works on two relations as the input R1 and R2. And what is the symbol that is used to denote this Cartesian product? Cartesian product operation is denoted by the cross symbol. In simple terms, we can say R1 Cartesian product or cross R2 will give the result as all possible pairing. Say for example, if relation 1 has 4 tuples and relation 2 has 6 tuples, then all the 4 tuples in relation 1 will be associated with all 6 tuples in relation 2. So obviously, 4 cross 6 which is equal to 24 records will be there in the output. And that is why it is quoted that R1 cross R2 gives the result as the all possible pairing among all the tuples in the relations involved. Now there is a problem here. Let's say this relation 1 contains customer name as one of the attributes. And relation 2 also has one of the attributes which is customer name. But in the all possible pairing that is in the Cartesian product output, we will have the relation with two customer names, isn't it? One customer name is from this relation and the other customer name attribute is from this relation. Will it give ambiguity? Yes, that's one of the problems in Cartesian product because the same attribute may appear in both R1 and R2. In that case, the output relation will have both of these attributes. Let's take some real time example. Let's say there is a depositor relation and there is a borrower relation. And what we are going to do is the depositor cross borrower and the output is going to be the all possible pairing and the result I am going to store it in the relation R. Now what's the speciality about this Cartesian product? This Cartesian product is differing from join operations which we are going to see in the additional relational algebra operations in the coming lectures in what way it is differing. In the join operations there should be some join conditions. Say for example I want to join relation 1 and relation 2. In that case I need at least one common attribute in order to perform the join operation. Let's say there is a situation where we don't have any common attribute in both the relations. Let's say depositor relation contains customer name and account number. Let's say borrower relation contains loan number and loan value. In this case, there are no common attributes here. Cartesian product will work because it's going to perform only all possible pairings. In simple terms, this Cartesian product will do all possible pairing without checking for any conditions. Whereas join require a join condition. Anyway, don't worry about the join operations now. In the coming lectures, we are going to exclusively focus on join operations with relevant examples. For now, just understand, Cartesian product simply performs all possible pairings among the relations. So let's see an example now. So in this example, what we are going to see is we are going to perform the depositor Cartesian product borrower. And let's take both the relations now. Relation 1 is depositor which contains two attributes, customer name and account number. And we have two records here, Tom 101 and Rose 304, these two tuples are there in depositor relation. And let's take the other relation, the borrower relation, which also contains two attributes, customer name and loan number. In this case, customer John is having the loan number L201 or 201, Smith with the loan number 658, 
Rose with the loan number 254 and Jack with the loan number 547. Now, if you analyze this, there is a common attribute here, customer name and customer name in both the relations. But in order to perform this depositor cross borrower, it need not be the case that there should be at least one common attribute in both the relations. Cartesian product will do all possible pairing even if there is no common attribute between the relations. But in this example, I have taken a common attribute. But please be noted that Cartesian product works even if there are no common attributes. Pause this video for a while and please answer this question. Now, how many tuples will be there in the result when we perform the Cartesian product between depositor and borrower? I hope you are done. So, depositor contains two tuples and borrower contains four tuples. So, two cross four. So, obviously, it's going to be eight tuples in the output relation. And this depositor cross borrower operation will give the temporary relation without any name which contains four attributes, customer name and account number from this depositor relation, customer name and account number. And from borrower relation, customer name and loan number. Can you see here this customer name and loan number from borrower relation? Now let's analyze the output. When we take this first tuple, Tom A101. Can you see here Tom A101 is associated with all these four tuples in the other relation. Can you see here Tom A101 with John, with Smith, with Rose, with Jack. Can you see here Tom with John, with Smith, with Rose, with Jack. All these four records are tuple 1 in this relation. And taking the second relation Rose A304, Rose A304 is also associated with all other tuples in the other relation. Can you see here? Rose A304 is associated with John, Smith, Rose and Jack where John, Smith, Rose and Jack are there in the other relation. And this is what we call it as all possible pairing. Now why do we need this? There are situations where we need to do this Cartesian product in order to fetch some records. In that case, Cartesian products will be handy and useful. After doing Cartesian product, we can apply select condition to retrieve the appropriate records. What select condition can be applied? This customer name and this customer name should be equal. In this case, can you see here this Tom is not matching here at all, but Rose is matching here. So after doing Cartesian product, we can confirm that Rose who is having the account number A304 might have availed the loan L254. This is possible only when we do Cartesian product. In this case, since customer name is matching in both the relations, we can tell that this record rows and this record rows may be associated with each other. And this Cartesian product will do the operation even if there are no common attributes. Before we proceed with the real world example, I request you to pause this video for a while. Just analyze this output relation and tell me is there any ambiguity in this relation. I hope you are done. Yes, there is an ambiguity in this relation. Let's say I'm renaming this output relation as product. Say when I address this product relation by referring the customer name, there are two customer name attributes here. One is this and the other one is this and both are different. Can you see here? It contains only Tom and Rose, whereas it contains different values. In that case, how to address this customer name and this customer name? If there are no common attributes, it's easy. There is no ambiguity. But when there are common attributes and when we perform Cartesian product, obviously it leads to ambiguity. Now how to resolve this? That's what we are going to see now. Say for example, when we perform Cartesian product between depositor and borrower and the output is going to be a temporary relation. And let's assume this output of this Cartesian product, I am renaming it to R. Let's say this R is the relation name. And in this case, this output relation R will contain four attributes. What are they? Customer name from the depositor relation and account number from the depositor relation. And customer name from borrower relation, loan number from borrower relation. Now there are four attributes in the output relation. I told you that there is an ambiguity that customer name is appearing two times in the output table. But this ambiguity can be resolved by referring to the table name, the original table name. This customer name is from depositor, so I can address it as depositor.customer name. And this customer name is from borrower relation. So I can address it as borrower.customer name. By this way, we can resolve the conflicts or the ambiguity. And there is no ambiguity for account number and loan number. But still we are referring it with the table name. And it need not be the case. We can even refer without the table name because there is no ambiguity. So simply we can also represent like depositor.customer name, account number, 
comma borrower dot customer name comma loan number because the ambiguity is with the customer name only but not with the other attributes. We are done with the basics of the Cartesian product operation. Let's now see an example. The example that we are going to see now is the same university database that we have been seeing in the last few presentations. And I'm just going to present the schema here, the instructor course department section, teachers, student, advisor, takes, classroom and time slot relation. I request you to pause this video for a while and understand the schema. I hope you are done. Now we are going to solve a question in the Cartesian product using this university database schema. And the question is, find the names of all instructors in the physics department together with the course IDs of all courses they taught. So we are required to find the names of all the instructors in the physics department. And not just the names of all instructors in physics department together with the course IDs of all the courses they have taught. I'll just go to the schema now. If we are going to retrieve only the instructor's ID, it's so simple to retrieve because we are going to retrieve all the instructor's ID from the physics department. So we can simply use project and inside that project we can go for select where the department name is physics. We have already seen similar examples in select operation itself. But what we are required to find? We are required to find the instructor's ID along with the course ID that they have taught. So this instructor ID along with the course ID. If that's the case, we can directly use this relation teachers and we can just project only ID and course number, isn't it? But why do we need Cartesian product here? Because we are not going to retrieve all instructors ID along with all course IDs they have taught. We want only the IDs of instructors along with the courses of the instructors in the physics department where the department name is residing in another relation and department level information is not there in this relation. So obviously, we need to join two tables with some condition. If there is no common attribute or join condition, we can go for Cartesian product and then we can retrieve the records accordingly. No worries, we will proceed with the solution, then you will be able to understand things clearly. I am going to the question slide now. So here is the question, find the names of all instructors in the physics department together with the course IDs of all courses they taught. If you are proficient working with the relational algebra operations and expressions, you can directly answer this. But here I am going to solve this with some real world examples. So here is the solution for this. If you are pretty confident, you can solve like this directly. But what I am going to do now is I am going to do a step by step approach. So what's the question? We are required to find the names of all instructors in the physics department. So remember, it's physics department and the instructors in the physics department together with all the course IDs of courses they taught. So all the instructors in the physics department along with the course IDs they taught. So what are the two tables that we want here? The instructor relation because we need to take the names of all the instructors from the instructor relation. And can we take the sections relation? No, section contains only the course relation information. We want the instructor who handled that particular course to that particular section. So we are preferring the teacher's relation. So we are first doing the Cartesian product between instructor and teachers. Don't worry about the solution now. We will come back to the slide again. For now, we will take two relations, instructor and teachers with some sample records. Here is the instructor relation and here is the teacher's relation. In the instructor relation, we have four attributes, ID, name, department name and salary. And we have two tuples here. I am not taking more tuples because the Cartesian product output will be enormous. We know if relation 1 has 5 tuples and relation 2 has 10 tuples, obviously the output will be 5 multiplied by 10, 50 tuples in the Cartesian product output. So to save time and space, I am just taking only two tuples in the instructor relation. Coming to the teacher's relation, we have four tuples 10101, 20202. 7878712345. So I request you to pause this video for a while and think about the instructor's ID that are matching in both the relations. I hope you are done. If you see here, in this case 10101 or 10101 is John and here we have 10101. So it means this instructor John who is working in the biology department drawing the salary of $65,000 
who has actually handled this course Bio 108 for the section ID 1 in the semester summer in the year 2009. And coming to 78787 Raj, Raj has handled physics because 78787 is the ID of Raj. So he has handled this particular course in the section ID 2 in fall 2011. And what about 2022 and 12345? We have not taken those examples here. So now what's the question? We want to list the names of all instructors who are working in the physics department along with the courses they taught. It's clear that from this table, Raj is the person who is working in the physics department who has handled this particular subject physics 101. So by looking at this output, we can easily say that this tuple Raj is matching with this entry because 78787 is matching here because this ID of instructor is matching with this ID of teachers. We can say the output easily here because we have only limited records here. Think a real-time university database which contains thousands and thousands of information. In that case, we can't easily retrieve this. We need to do Cartesian product between instructor and teachers. Imagine we don't know whether this ID and this ID are matching with each other. So what we are simply going to do is we are going to do the Cartesian product. I mean instructor cross teachers and how many tuples will be there in the output? It's obviously 8 because here we have 2 and here we have 4. So 2 cross 4 is 8. So the instructor cross teachers will have 8 tuples. Can you see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. I'll go back to the previous slide. Can you see here this John will be added with all these 4 tuples. Similarly, Raj's information will be added with all these 4 tuples. So in the output, we will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 columns. So the output obviously will be containing 9 columns. Can you see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. There is an ambiguity here. What is that? This is also ID. This is also ID. But this ID is from which relation? Instructor relation. And this ID is from teacher's relation. To avoid the ambiguity, I have just made it as instructor.id and this is teachers.id. Can you see here this John's information is added with all four tuples in the other side, the teachers relation. And coming to Raj, Raj's information is just added or joined with all other four tuples in the other relation. And it's very clear that this is not the exact output that we want. This is merely the instructor cross teachers. And what is the actual question? The question is we want to list the names of all instructors who is working for physics department along with the courses they have taught, right? So in this case, 10101 is actually John and this is instructor ID and this is teacher's ID. So this is matching. But in this case, 10101 John is not this 20202. So this is an invalid entry and this is an invalid entry because this teachers.id is not matching with instructors this ID. At the same time, when we see the output, we are getting the output of both the department names biology and physics. And what is asked in the question? We want the instructors in the physics department. From this output, what I am going to do is, I am going to apply a filter where I am going to retrieve all the tuples that is having the department name as physics. Because in the question, we are required to find the list of instructors who is working for physics department along with the courses they taught. So just see this portion now. So from this output instructor cross teachers and just retrieving or selecting all the tuples where the department name is equal to physics. So what are all the tuples we won't be getting in the output? The tuples where the department name is biology will not be there in the output. And we will have only these four output. So the output of this relational algebra expression instructor cross teachers will have eight tuples now we have only four tuples because we have selected only the tuples that are having the department name as physics. Is this the output of the question that we are dealing with? No. We want only the names of the instructors along with the courses they taught. But in this case, there are some invalid entries. Can you see here? Raj is having the ID, the instructor ID 78787. This is actually concatenated with an invalid entry 10101. This is invalid. And this is also invalid and this is valid and this is invalid. So what I am going to do now is I am going to take this output, right? This is the output for this expression. So I will take this into a new slide. So here is the output for this relational algebra expression. 
So what are all the invalid entries? One, two, three. Why? Because the instructor's ID is not matching with the teacher's ID, right? Only this third row is a valid entry. How to filter this or how to select this? It's so simple. This is the output for this particular expression, right? We want only this particular tuple, am I right? So what we are going to do now is we are going to again use a select operation and the condition is where the instructor's ID is equal to the teacher's ID. Just see the expression here. This is the relational algebra expression that gives this whole output. From this we are going to select all the tuples where the instructor's ID which is this ID is matching with the teacher's ID which is this ID. So in this case only this particular row will be selected and other rows are not selected because the condition is violated. So the output for this particular expression will contain only one tuple in this example which is this. Did we get the output? No. What we are asked to find? We are asked to find the names of all instructors along with the course ID not other details. Right. This relational algebra expression will give a temporary relation which is this intermediate relation which contains all attributes, right? But we want only name and course ID because that's what the question is. So what we are going to do is from this just project only two columns, what are they? Name and course ID. So I'm just placing this whole expression here and we are going to project only two columns, what are they? Name and course ID. So when we do that, we will get the output as only name and course ID. Only Raj is the instructor who is working in physics department along with the course ID. The course ID here is physics 101 which is this. Now let me go to the solution part now and the solution goes like this. First what we did, the instructor cross teachers and from this we selected all the tuples that are belonging to physics department and then we selected all the tuples where the instructor's ID is matching with the teacher's ID. This contains all the attributes but we are required to know only the names of the instructors along with the course ID, right? So from this output, just give this entire expression here and the outer expression is going to be project where we are going to project only name and course ID. And we can also solve this in other ways. This is the alternate way of solving the same question. And what is the difference between this and this expression is here we have first performed instructor cross teachers and then we selected the department name is equal to physics and then we matched the instructor ID and then we projected the name and course ID. But here what we are going to do is first we are going to take the instructor relation and we are going to select all the tuples that are belonging to physics department first. So Cartesian product is not first applied here directly. In the previous case Cartesian product were applied on both the relations first. But here we are first selecting all the tuples that are matching to the department name physics and then this output is done with the Cartesian product operation with teachers and this output will not be 100% accurate. So we are just matching the instructor IDs here. After this we are projecting only name and course ID. So there is a homework question for you. The question is just take the same examples. I'll show the examples now. Here are these two relations instructor and teachers. For these two relations, we got this output. What is that output? This is the output for which expression? This expression, right? So I want you to give a try using this expression. So for the same example, first do this part and then perform the Cartesian product and then select with this and then project and compare whether the results of these two expressions are matching with each other. And also just recollect, I told you, there are multiple ways to solve a problem. You can choose any approach but please be ensured that the logic that we are applying should be correct. And that's it guys, what we have seen in this presentation, the Cartesian product operation. So in the next presentation, we will focus on the next fundamental relational algebra operation, the rename operation. I'll see you in the next presentation and thank you for watching.